Doug with Arnold Innovations and today I'm going to show you how to install uh, an AI100 Lexion onto a class Lexion Combine. Right here we have the it's a 760 model that it's going to go on and it's on uh, on tracks which makes things a little bit easier. Uh, but stay tuned and I'll show you how it goes. So first things you want to do is uh, check the boxes and make sure you got everything you need. So this kit comes in two boxes, a one of two and a two of two. The one of two is the smaller. You're going to want some snips or side cutters to cut this banding off. And then just a regular exacto knife to open up the boxes. So most important thing get box one open this is your instructions they look like this so those are to help assist you in the install process inside a box two you should have four hoses so those are on top. they are color coded for where they go so blue is pressure yellow is return uh, green is your a line and red is your b line uh, as well as that, you should have a, a box here. Uh, inside that will be the hub, the bolts, uh, the safety sticker, as well as the switch for the 500 series if you need require that. Uh, we have the valve assembly itself right there. As you can see, color coated to match your hoses. You have the arm bracket that mounts to the ratchet head and pins to the cylinder. We have the valve mount with its appropriate hardware. It goes with that valve there. We have the main mounting assembly. So that's what is in box two. And here we have laid out what was in box one. It's so manual, safety flag, the ratchet head, and the cylinder. Now that we've ensured we have all of the parts, it's time to start the install process. So one of the first things we're going to do is mount this hub so if you open up this box you'll find the hub itself you'll find the bag hardware to replace the factory stuff a warning label for the guard and uh, if you again if you're doing a 500 series model there'll be a switch there that will have to get wired in I'm not going to show you that portion today because we are doing an install on as I said 7, 760 model there's a few things you can do to make your life easier on this install um, and one of them is to pre-assemble a few pieces that aren't put together so right now I'm going to show you how to install the ratchet head to the main arm so it doesn't require many tools 9 16 socket 15 16 sockets and the matching wrenches I'm going to use a uh, air ratchet or air impact here um, you can just use a regular ratchet if that's what you have uh, but I'll show you how to do that now. So first thing you want to do is just take the hardware out here. It should just be kind of finger tight from the factory. You may need a wrench just if it's snugged up a bit. Set your washer and that to the side and then you want to again take off the 3 8 serrated nut here. Set it to the side. And then you're going to drop the pin, both those bolts out. You might have to move that lever a little bit. You see what I did there. Next you want to insert the, the arm into the ratchet head. Start to line the holes up. I like to line the small bolt up first. 
is the 3 8 and then get 5 8 installed. And it's a matter of just installing the hardware here. So then you just want to go ahead and tighten this hardware up. Snug it up so that lock washer is engaged. And then tighten the serrated flange nut. And that is your pre assembled sub assembly. The next sub assembly we're going to do is mounting the valve assembly to its bracket. Uh, simple tools again. This is just a half inch uh, wrench. We've got a cordless impact uh, to do this one. Um, so, simple. Start by removing the hardware. So, these are 5 16 bolts, nuts, and washers. Take the three out like that. Set your nuts and bolts off to the side here, and then these drop through the bosses on this valve block, and line up with the holes. So you got three bolts installed like so. So with the valve flipped over, you can go ahead and tighten those three bolts. One, two, I need to flip this over a little bit to reach the third one. Like so. Then you have the second assembly, sub-assembly done. So that's the uh, control valve on its bracket. Now that you've made your pre uh, your sub assemblies, uh, I find it wise to gather pretty well all the tools you're going to need. Um, so some wrenches, inch, seven eighths, three quarters, eleven sixteenths. I also here have a three quarter inch socket. On the metric side, I have a 19 mil socket, a 17, a 19, a 27, and a 30. Hammer, mallet, just for persuading things. Uh, if you don't have any of these sizes, uh, you can try and get by with a crescent wrench. Uh, a cordless impact just to make my life easy. You're going to need some sort of drill. Today I'm going to be using a mag drill. You can use a handheld cordless or corded drill. Uh, it's whatever you have available. And then I kind of just have everything laid out here. So the mechanical stuff that I'm going to do first, I'm going to bolt stuff together. Uh, and then I'll get into showing you guys how all the hydraulics is ran. Um, and of course, manual uh, that's going to explain along with this video on how to do this install. So we're here on the non uh, step side of the combine, the front here, um, and where we're going to be working is behind this cover. So the first step is going to be to remove that cover. Uh, this is a little bolt up there that we're going to undo and then it will slide right out. Um, so I said earlier this machine's on tracks. This is going to be your easier to install because you can see this whole area. Um, they do fit on machines with single and dual uh, dual wheels. It's just your install is going to be a little tougher. It's going to be harder to get at stuff. It's just so uh, try not to get frustrated and uh, get things installed for yourself. So if we open our instructions, uh, the first thing is going to be to uh, mount this main bracket right here. So you got to get this cover out of the way. Uh, you can just use the tool that comes with your combine or uh, I find a 13 mil wrench works just fine too. Just a quarter to half turn there and it pops out. Then uh, grab a hold of this cover, swing it and pull it out of the way. So this cover just actually rolls right out of the way like so. Um, we're just going to set this off somewhere safe so it doesn't get bent. Now with that cover removed, 
um, we can see where we're going to do the install. So that main bracket, we drill some holes right here, um, and it's going to get bolted in here. You can see there's some electrical and stuff running behind here. Just got to be really careful when you're doing that not to pinch or cut anything. These bolts are the bolts we will be removing later in the video here to install the hub. Yeah, and uh, up there are the two hydraulic lines that we tie in to, to uh, take fluid. So I'm going to get started by marking and, and drilling these. So next you want to mark out for drilling your holes. Um, so come off of here, down three inches, make a mark, and offer up one of your brackets, lining it up with the top of there, and flush down the side, and you can go ahead and mark in the center of your holes. Uh, I recommend marking and center punching the center hole, mark the other two holes as well, but uh, drill that hole out first, uh, and then bolt this bracket on, and uh, check those holes and make sure they're all going to be right before you drill all three. Then you punch your mark, and then you're ready to drill it. Stop it there for a moment. Then you want to start by drilling a pilot hole. center bolt through. Okay, so slide your first block on so it's nicely lined up. Try and keep this edge straight along there. And then using a marker, mark. Make sure not to move this when you're doing this. Keep it still as possible. Mark the holes like so. And then you can take center punch. Get it right in the middle. Get it, get it slide this off. more. 
So install the three half by four and a half bolts through the holes that you drilled. Next thing to go on is your uh, warning flag plate uh, and then start in installing these one inch spacer blocks. There's one two of them. So get your two blocks installed. Lastly, on the same bolts, the main bracket. You might need a rubber mallet just to get everything lined up. You need to take your three three quarter inch serrated flange nuts, or sorry, half inch serrated flange nuts, and install them onto those bolts. Like so. Okay. Uh, so next we want to tighten these uh, bolts up. So I'm just using a cordless impact. You can use one of these or an air impact or just a regular ratchet. I got a wrench on the back side. So it's a three quarter inch socket. So you want to suck them nice and tight. Next step is to uh, Install a hydraulic cylinder. It's just going to go into the main bracket and get pinned using the pins that come with the cylinder. Uh, then you have your split hairpin that's going to go in the back. Just take a moment to line it up. I have to rotate it. See. And then with a set of pliers. I know you can't see this very well right now, but just bend the end. So it's similar to the, to the exposed side you can see there. Now we're going to move on to pinning the ratchet head on. So very much the same way using the other factory pin. Take the ratchet head. This is quite a heavy step, so be careful. Lift it. You can Kind of set it in there and then slowly work it down. Just take your time, get the pin in, and again, hairpin on the back side. Use your pliers, you might have to tap it, and then do the same thing. ratchet head pinned to the cylinder you can install the hitch pin that comes with the kit this is to retain the ratchet head when it's not in use um, so we're just going to put it in at this point in the assembly uh, just because we're going to be working to install that hub and I don't want the ratchet head to move so it just gets installed like that uh, next we're going to re remove these bolts uh, to install this hub kit comes with with longer bolts you're going to need to use a breaker bar or an impact to get these loose. So just remove them like so. So next step is you want to install the sub using the factory holes and the longer bolt supplied. Similar to installing a wheel, you want to install different points around the circumference. So, so with all the bolts started by hand, you just start with one bolt, tighten it up, go to the opposite side, directly opposite, 180 degrees, tighten it up. With all the bolts installed around the hub and tightened up, that ends the mechanical portion of the install. 
Uh, next we're going to move on to installing the hydraulics. Uh, next we're going to install the uh, valve assembly. So it just tucks in behind here. It should pick up on factory holes like so and then on the back here we'll install the nuts one with a little bit of a tight spot. Just take your time and slowly thread your thread. Like so. You want to tighten up the two supplied bolts and nuts. These are quarter inch bolts, so they take a 7 16 wrench. I'm using a ratchet wrench and an open wrench here. You can use a socket if you prefer. It's a little bit tight of a spot, so a ratchet wrench works real good. Uh, now we're going to start running our hydraulic lines and installing fittings to get the system plugged up. So, plumbed up. So just got to take out these plastic plugs. Just put our oil in the cylinder. Make sure you get that plastic ring out as well. A uh, 18 mil wrench fits on these perfectly. You can use a screwdriver also to the flat end. Again, making sure you're getting both of those plastic seals out too. So next, we're going to run our AB supply lines uh, from the valve block to the cylinder. So that's green and red. Uh, the green one is slightly longer, so it needs to be installed to this port, the red to this port. Uh, so we put the fittings on the end of the hoses to, to make it easy to ship and you know where stuff goes. So just unscrew those. So this is off the end of the red line. We'll now install into the lower port. Next we're going to take that same elbow off of the green line. And if you notice this one's slightly larger, so they are different. And install that into the upper port. <laughs> as well as on that same green hose on the large port there's this inline reducer it's important to install this so it's going to install right into that elbow we're going to kind of position our elbows where the lines need to be just tighten this one up a little bit further and spin these nuts down you can leave everything loose or tighten as you go. Once I have these kind of in place, I'm gonna go ahead and, and tighten these two elbows down. Um, I believe that uses a 7 8 wrench. So if you hold it and snug that nut. If you want to, you can hold the fitting with a 3 quarter inch wrench that will fit to nicely snug those up. At the same time, I need to install this reducer.
So you gotta, this is the return line. It's marked with BC yellow tape. You can remove that. And then this plug needs to come out of the valve block. This is where our return line needs to go. Before we put any hoses up, it's probably a good idea to get that out of the way. Now our supply lines, or our AB lines, the red one goes in this red cap. You should just be able to pull out like that. And the green one here is obviously marked with the green. So, red, green. So, I did loosen off the end of the red hose as it has a fixed end on it. We are going to play around with where it sits best to get it installed, which I think it's going to be pointing down. Bell block is tight, it's going to take a little bit of patience hooking these lines up, but they will fit. If you just take your time, so that's the red one. The green one is the one with the gauge, it's a little bit more room up here. So, again, I think I'm going to go on this one, I'm going to go straight up. install it in like so. So using a couple one inch wrenches, you can tighten these lines up. Again, this is kind of a small space. It's going to take a little bit of patience to get these lines hooked up. You can tighten that right up. This is a swivel, so we'll be able to position our hose. Same with this one down here. You're just going to have to work it. Try and get it as tight as you can with your fingers. Tighten it up using a short wrench here. You got one that's great. If you have to use a full size wrench, it's just gonna take you a little bit longer to get into this spot. Snug it up. And give it a tighten. Get that full size wrench. Again, it's gonna swivel so we can position the line. Uh, so this is the part where we just earlier took the yellow tape off and took that plug out. So obviously our yellow line is gonna go there. And we're going to start threading this on by hand. This is our return line. I'm going to tap into the combine system with that T. And I'm going to use my short one inch wrench. If you don't have a short one, again, you can use a full size wrench. It's just going to take a little bit more time and patience. But, and once more, we'll snug it with a full size wrench, like so. The last and fourth line is the pressure line. Again, it's got a T to tap into the combine's hydraulics. Uh, this is a pipe thread here. So we are gonna have to take this end and then we're gonna install it. You can see this blue lever right here. It's a shut off valve. So we're gonna install it in there. With your line taped, your pressure line taped up, like so. Uh, 
they're going to come down underneath here and thread it into this quarter turn shutoff valve. This is a swivel fitting as well, so you just turn the fitting. So. Thirty mil or an inch and three sixteenths to hold the shutoff valve, and a one inch to turn the line in, tighten it up. Again, I'm using a short one inch tight spot. And if you got to get a bigger inch in there, it's just going to take you a little bit more time. Just be patient. Open it up. Just like all the rest of them, I'm going to get my bigger inch in. Here. Slide that line right up so it does not work. Like so. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to install the pressure line. So we've installed this T into the into the factory line here, and now we're going to tighten on the pipe like so. We're going to make sure all of, this is nice and tight here, here, and here. Next, we'll move on to the return line. Uh, we're going to place the same style T. This one. So again, our return line was that yellow pipe, uh, and in a moment I'll show you how to do that. We're going to install the return T into the return line here. So we've loosened off both sides this quick coupler here. Hopefully you're gonna get a bit of oil when you do this. Something else to catch it. Install it onto this side like so. And then onto the other side. Like I said, you get a bit of oil out of here. There's some shop towel or pan underneath it to catch it. Tighten the T using the appropriate size wrenches. Then the factory pipe back on. And then lastly, the service line to the R valve. Again, this is the return line, which is the yellow color coated line. this installed. This ends the portion of the video of how the hydraulics are installed. Now we're going to test and run the system, check for leaks. Uh, other than that, that's the installation.